Hello, everyone, and welcome to Precalculus, section 4.5 on the graphs of sine and cosine. So I'm just going to warn you that this is might be a little intimidating at first. We've got a, a strange new type of graph here, but most people love this section. It is usually the favorite part of chapter four. So um, go into it with a great attitude because I think you'll like it. So we're going to we're going to make a graph the same way we would make any graph that we didn't know how to do. We're going to plot points. So our function is y is equal to sine of x. So I'm going to pick an x value and then I'm going to do sine of x. And I'm going to think about it in terms of the unit circle. So I'm going to start at 0 and work my way around. So sine of 0, you might be needing to use your table is zero. And then I work my way around. I'm going to do pi fourths. I'm not going to do every little one like pi thirds and pi sixths, but pi fourths is that value. Sine of pi fourths is the square root of two over two, which I realize you don't know. But the square root of two is about 1.4. So divided by two is about 0.7. So if here's half, then 0.7 would be, and here's pi fourths, maybe like right there. We'll do an easy one next. Sine of pi halves. Sine of pi halves is 1. So at pi halves, we're going to be at 1. And then sine of 3 pi fourths. So remember that sine of 3, four, three pi fourths has a reference angle of pi fourths. So it's going to have the same value, square root of 2 over 2. And because sine is positive in this quadrant, remember that sine is related to the y value over r, which is just 1. So that's why it's the same on both sides. So sine of 3 pi fourths is also square root of 2 over 2, which is 0.7. So at 3 pi fourths, I'm at 0.7. And then sine of pi is 0. Now just to make our lives easy, we're going to stick with all the pi fourths. Why does that make our lives easy? Because the sine of 5 pi fourths is going to be the same as the sine of 7 pi fourths. It's all going to be 0.7. But since I'm now down and sine has to do with the y value, it is going to be negative 0.7. Sine in quadrant 3 is negative. And sine in quadrant 4 is negative. But in between those two, I do have 3 pi halves. Sine of 3 pi halves, again, sine looks at the y value, so sine of 3 pi halves is negative 1. And then I get back up on the unit circle to 2 pi, which is back to 0. So 0, and then at 3 pi fourths, I'm at negative 0.7. I get down to negative 1, and then negative 0.7, and then back up to 0. So it makes this really cool-looking shape. But what's most important is that after it gets to that cool looking shape, it's just going to go around the circle again and then again. And so it's going to have this pattern of repetition that's going to make it super easy for us to graph. This is what sine is going to look like. So you've probably seen this shape before, and now you know where it comes from. So most people don't actually graph the point sevens. The th five points that I really want you to be familiar with are zero, and then it goes up to one, down to zero, down to negative one, back up to zero, and that's considered one period. So a period is something that repeats, like a periodical. So that basic pattern then is just going to start all over again. And then there's going to be another one over here. That's called a period. Or you might hear some people call it a cycle. So the graph of sine is periodic, which means it repeats. That's what the word periodic, just like a periodical. This is because sine only has different values from 0 to 2 pi. After that, the values of sine are all the same as the coterminal angles. 
you already plotted. So if you suddenly did, um, say what's that, eight pi fourths? So if you suddenly did nine pi fourths, that's the same as pi fourths. You're not getting a new angle, you're just getting a coterminal one. So we say that the period of sine is two pi. That's how long it takes for it to complete its cycle. We have a domain. I mean, I've been saying this since September, you're not escaping domain and range. So, well, we might be escaping my pen working here. So the domain of sine is all real numbers because you can find the sine of any angle. It doesn't matter where you are in the unit circle, how many times you've been around, where you are on the x-axis, there's a value. But the range of sine is actually just negative one to one. Look what it does. It goes up to one, then down to negative one, up to one, and then down to negative one. And on the unit circle, that's because the greatest y value the unit circle ever obtains is one, which occurs at pi halves. So graphically, the range determines the amplitude of the graph, amplitude being a height. So we're going to say that the amplitude of sine is one. So lots of new definitions. I'm hopeful that it'll all become clearer when we do cosine. Just in case you didn't quite catch it on the first time, we're going to do the whole thing all over again with cosine. If you think you can do it on your own, by all means, that would be fantastic. So again, I'm going to make a little chart here, x, and then y is equal to cosine of x. So cosine of 0, you can use your chart or your unit circle, but cosine of 0 is 1, cosine of pi fourths is square root of 2 over 2, which again is 0.7, cosine of pi halves is 0, cosine of 3 pi fourths. Now I'm in quadrant 2, and its reference angle is pi fourths, so it's still 0.7, but cosine in quadrant 2 is negative. And then pi, cosine of pi is negative 1, cosine of 5 pi fourths. Cosine is has a reference angle of pi fourths, so it's 0.7, but it's negative because I'm in quadrant 3 now. And then 3 pi halves. Cosine of 3 pi halves is 0. And cosine of 7 pi fourths is cosine in quadrant 4 is positive. So the reference angle is still pi fourths, but now it's positive 0.7. And then 2 pi get, makes us go all the way around the unit circle, and we are back to 1. So the points that I want you to know for cosine are that cosine starts at 1, at pi halves, it's at 0. At pi, it's at negative 1. At 3 pi halves, it's at 0. And at 2 pi, it goes back up to 1. So why did I include the 0.7s? Because if I didn't, and somebody just did these points, at least in the beginning, they're not going to make the right shape. If you guys connect them like this, I'm not going to give you a good grade. Don't do that. Okay, so at least for a little while, I'm going to be putting the point sevens in to make sure that you have the right shape. So at pi fourths, it's not it's not half. It's not down here. It's point seven. It's a little higher. And then here at three pi fourths, again, it's point seven. It's about there in three pi fourths. So notice that it has this arch shape, not and then you don't need to keep drawing them if you got it. Okay, so it has this nice, nice curvature, which I want you to be able to draw. Once you got that curvature, you don't really need the point sevens. Kind of missed my point sevens. But I was really trying to show the arch there. So what are the points I want you to really have in your head for cosine? Cosine starts at one and ends at one. Its full period is this shape right here. And the five points are starts at one, ends at one, in the middle it's at negative one, and in the middle of the middle, which is pi halves, but you'll see later why I call it the middle of the middle, at the quarter mark and the three quarter mark, it's, uh, it's at zero. So that's what its period is. So the graph of cosine is also periodic for the same reason that sine is, and that is that it repeats like a periodical, keeps, keeps going. 
after all the values of cosine through cosine of two pi are plotted, they will just repeat as coterminal angles. So that's why you keep getting the same one over and over again. Just think about it as going around the unit circle. Remember that cosine is based on the x. So that's why it starts off at one. And then for this one, look, the x is smaller. And then for this angle, the x is smaller until there's no x at all. When you're at pi halves, there's no x value at all in that triangle that doesn't even exist. And then there is an x value, but it's negative. And then there's another x value, but it's negative until it's all the way out at the end at negative one. For this triangle, again, x is a negative number. And x keeps getting smaller, see how much smaller that little x is, until x becomes um, zero. And then now x is in the positive region again. And it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you're thinking, I am really not following what you're doing with that unit circle. That's okay. You don't actually have to make the connection right away. You just have to be able to make the graph. So sin, cosine starts at one, ends at one, in the middle it's at negative one, and then at these two points it's zero. The period of cosine is two pi. The domain of cosine is all real numbers. You can take the cosine of any angle. But the range of cosine, just like last time, is that it's between one and negative one because the unit circle limits it to one and negative one. The amplitude of cosine is one. So these are the parent graphs. If you're in CP, you definitely are gonna to wanna to put these parent graphs and mark one period on your appendix. If you're in honors, then you should memorize them. What are we going to do now? We're going to stretch, shrink, shift. So I will just warn you right now that I do not do it the same way that the book does it. I, I do it slightly differently because it allows us to keep the same patterns that we've always used. Even without knowing anything about trig functions, I bet you already know that A affects its slope, that D is going to be an up or down, that C is going to be a left or right. And then we're going to have this new guy, B. So you know that when you have just y is equal to x, it hasn't gone left or right. It's at 0, 0. It hasn't gone up or down, and it has a slope of 1. But as soon as you do y is equal to 3x, again, no shift left or right. But look, it, it went steeper, right, because it has a steeper slope. That same is going to be true for cosine. Everything's going to get multiplied by 3. It's going to affect its amplitude. So think about the five points of cosine. Cosine normally starts at one, ends at one. In the middle, it's at negative one. And then at the middle of the middle, it's right there. I'm going to go ahead and draw my parent graph just real lightly dotted so that you can see it. That's the parent graph. So now we actually want to do three cosine of x. It should be three times as steep, three times as big. So take each one of these points and multiply it by three. One times three is three. Zero times three is zero. Zero times, or sorry, three times negative one is negative three. Zero times three is zero. And three times one is back up to three again. Can you see what that does? Made it three times as steep. Now, you do have to keep going. You can't just draw one period. So use your pattern to go in the other direction. And you'll get better at using that pattern. And then kind of connect your dots. But you are required to go all the way across. Notice that mine's not perfectly shaped, a little misshape in there. That's OK. As long as it's not pointy, I think we'll be OK with it. Let's do the same thing for sine. Let's start with just the parent graph to remind you. The five points I want you to know is that sine starts at zero, ends at zero, and it's in the middle at zero. I'm just going to go ahead and make that a little easier to see. Sine starts at zero, 
ends at zero, in the middle at zero, and then in the middle of the middle, it goes up to one and down to negative one. Those are the five points that I really want you to have in your head. And real lightly, I'm gonna make the parent graph. So what should a one half to do it? Make it not as steep, half as steep to be exact. So I'm gonna multiply each coordinate by a half, each Y value. So zero times a half is still zero. And then one times a half is only a half. Zero is still zero. Negative one times a half is negative one half. And zero is still zero. And you can start to draw it now, or you can follow the pattern. You can see that all the pies are going to be zero. I would fill those in. And then you can tell it's going to go down to the negative one half and then up to the positive one half. And having all the dots there usually helps kids draw a nice fluid curve. I didn't do it on the last one, but you should put arrows on to show that it keeps going. And notice this is a little more shallow because of that one half. So the amplitude is three. The amplitude is one half. Normally the amplitude is one. That's how high and how low it goes. As I'm hoping after these many months in pre-calculus, you know that if A is a negative number, the graph is flipped. So again, my five points of sign are starts at zero, ends at zero, in the middle at zero, it goes up to one and down to negative one. I'm gonna draw a little parent graph there, just so you can compare it. This one is going to be flipped upside down, and it's going to um, have an amplitude of two. So the amplitude is equal to two. I'm actually going to change that color there. Amplitude is equal to two. So two times negative two by the way, the amplitude is not negative two. Notice the absolute value. So the amplitude is just two. Um, so when you multiply zero by two, you're still at zero, but then one times negative two is down there. Zero is in the same spot. Negative one times negative two is suddenly positive two, and zero stays at zero because zero times negative two is still zero. You can see the pattern but you should continue to put your zeros out there and then your amplitude to make sure that when you start off, you have a really nice shape. Again, do I expect you to do the 0.7s? Notice I haven't, I haven't done those 0.7s again since that very first one. As long as you're getting that nice shape there and not making it pointy, I'm fine with just doing these basic five points. All right, so that's the first thing that we had to learn was amplitude. The next thing is phase shift. So they did give it a new name. We normally call it horizontal shift, um, or we just say, how is it shifted left and right? They gave it a new name, but it doesn't have a new job. You're still going to shift left when you have X plus C, and you're still going to shift right when you have X minus C. Remember, this is the one that is opposite. So I know you're going to get really sick of this, but I think it's going to help. The parent graph for sine starts at zero, ends at zero, meaning two pi, and at pi is zero. Sine of pi halves is one, sine of three pi halves is negative one. If you have those points memorized, this is gonna be a piece of cake. And I'm just gonna undo that because that is way too dark. So I just wanna kinda of have it there for you. So I'm gonna move this entire graph to the right pi halves. So this point goes to the right pi halves. This point to the right pi halves. This point to the right pi halves. And this point to the right pi halves. Okay, then I have to continue this. So once I have those, you still have to be able to go in the other direction. So you can hopefully see pattern that it makes. And then you can draw it real nicely. Okay. 
Um, I will say that if you want to use the origin method, where we shift the origin first and then make your five points, that's a totally great method. So we'll do that on the next one. This method is where you you just make the parent graph and then shift each point to the right pi halves. It's really up to you. You guys have learned so many things. You have choices. So you'll notice that this graph is different than all the other ones. Um, I could not find online a graph that was counting by thirds instead of by fourths. If you find one, you could let me know. That would be great. But otherwise, um, I do want you to all mark them the same way. So let's do one, two, three, and then this is pi. So it'd be a little hard to mark, but this would be pi thirds. This would be two pi thirds, and then this would be pi. Can you see why we're not, not going to label them all? One, two, this is going to be two pi. One, two, three, this is going to be three pi. In the other direction, one, two, three, this is going to be negative pi. A little tricky at first. So, so when I'm doing thirds, I'm going to shift it. Well, actually, I'm not going to shift it first. First, let's draw the parent graph. So cosine starts at one, and then it ends at one. So at two pi, find your two pi, it ends at one. And at pi, it's down to negative one. Now here's why I kept calling it the middle of the middle. Instead of saying at pi halves, because pi halves isn't really on here anymore, it's just counting by pi thirds, but you can still find halfway, right? So the middle of that, and then the middle of this, even though it didn't land on an exact point, you can still do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make my dotted line here. This is the parent graph. And now I'm going to shift it to the left because it's positive. And I'm going to shift it pi thirds, which is one unit. So this is going to go left one box because my boxes are pi thirds. Each box is counting a pi third. So this one's going to go left. This one is in the middle. So to make it go into the middle left, it still just moves one box. This moves a box. This moves. Oop, I did that one. This goes to the middle. And then this one moves a box. A little bit harder to continue the pattern, but you can do it. Just look at it. It skips a box and a half. So box and a half, it goes back down. Box and a half, it's at the bottom. Box and a half, it's in the middle again. And I can't keep going in that direction. On this one, box and a half. I don't know if this is the most mathematical way, but it's definitely how I do it. And it totally works. Okay. There you go. You can see that mine aren't perfect. Yours don't have to be perfect, but they do have to be accurate enough for me to know that you were shifting correctly. And that is the parent graph shifted pi thirds, which is why I a lot of times draw the parent graph first so that I can see it easily. So that's phase shift. Then there's vertical shift up and down. So shift up if D is greater than zero and down if D is less than zero. So now I will show it to you by um, moving the origin if you want to. So if instead of drawing the parent graph, you just want to move your origin up to and say, okay, I'm going to pretend that this is my new origin. That wasn't quite on there. New origin. Then from there, you could do the cosine graph. Cosine starts at 1 and then over at 2 pi. It ends at 1. And at pi, it's at negative 1, which on my new origin would be here. And then at pi halves, it's zero. So I noticed this time I didn't draw the parent graph. Instead, I shifted my origin, and then I did it. You still have to make sure you keep going. You have to know what this graph looks like in order to keep your graph going. So I'm going to draw it. I didn't do the parent graph this time. There you go. We'll do that again for sine. For sine, I'm going to take my, my origin, I'm going to move it down three. It doesn't go left or right. And then sine starts at zero, 
the ends is zero, and in the middle it's zero. Sine of pi halves is one, but this is my new origin. So from that origin, here's one. And from that origin, here's negative one. And you do have to keep going you have to be able to follow a pattern. So it's going to look like this. Okay, there you go. That's sine of x minus three. So here's the thing that's new. Everything up till now is something you probably could have figured out left, right, up, down. But we have something called a period. So the normal period is 2 pi. So b is normally non-existent. So if I just said to you, what is sine of x, then you would know that the period was 2 pi. But if I put a 3 in there, that's the letter B. The number in front of the X is the letter B, and that's what's going to either make it go really fast, right, or really slow. So think of like a hospital room where there was a machine doing different wavelengths. This B is the thing that determines that. So very simply, you can do the new period by finding your B, there it is, and doing 2 pi over b. That's your period, 2 pi thirds. We'll do that for all of them. In this case, here's my b. All right, this one's a little harder. So 2, let me just erase these. Uh, or not erase them. <laughs> so I'm going to make a little room here. Okay, so I want to do 2 pi, that's the normal period, but because there's a number in front of the x, I'm going to divide by 2 thirds. Do you remember what to do when you're doing a fraction over a fraction? You make both of them into fractions, 2 pi over 1, and then you flip and multiply. Or some of you might have learned it as keep, so I'm going to keep the 2 pi over 1 the same. Uh, change, change it to multiplication, and multiply or end flip keep change flip so the twos cancel and i get three pi so what that means is it means that this one which would normally finish at two pi is going to take until three pi before it finishes its cycle okay but we're not going to try and draw them yet i just want you to get the hang of this math so this number right here this b is one third so you have to do two pi over one third. Most people are successful when they make it into them both fractions. So two pi over one times three over one, six pi. That's gonna be the period. This one is going really slow. It's dragging. So normally it'd be all done by two pi, right? Instead, it's gonna take until six pi for it to finally finish. Okay, moving slow. How slow? One third the speed that it normally is, in case you're trying to figure out how this all relates. This one's going to move super fast, eight times as fast. So the period is normally two pi. It's going to be two pi divided by eight. The period's going to be pi over four. It's going to finish its entire thing. So normally here's two pi. Where's pi fourths? This is pi halves. It's right here. It's going to finish the whole thing by that. It's going to go really fast. If you want, you can see if you can figure out C and F on your own, but of course I will do them for you. So C is a little bit unusual. The number before the X has a pi in it. Don't let that throw you. Just do what you do every time. The period is going to be 2 pi over pi halves, whatever number is in front of the X. So I put that over one so that I have a fraction. And then, so I kept, keep, change to multiplication, and flip. So now my pi's cancel and I just get four. So sometimes you'll see a pi in the equation. That is what allows you to use just numbers on a graph. So somebody that didn't have a graph with pi's on it might use this convention to be able to 
to make the grid, just count by numbers instead of by pi. Last one, this number right here is one fourth. So two pi over one fourth is two pi, if you want to, over one times keep, change, flip. So that is a very long period. It doesn't finish a whole cycle until eight pi. Although this one's cosine, not sine. I was just doing a general concept of it. So cosine, which is the U-shaped one, it takes till eight pi before it finally finishes making it to U. All right, let's just try one of those. So y is equal to sine of 3x. So notice I didn't choose a graph here with pi's on it. That usually means that you need to count by thirds. So I'm going to go ahead and label this as pi. And then three more is 2 pi. 1, 2, 3 more is 3 pi. Other direction, this is negative pi. So this first one we're actually going to do and not just talk about. So the period is 2 pi over the number in front, which is 3. So I'm going to finish my entire cycle by 2 pi thirds. So like I've been doing, I'm going to draw the parent one for you so you can see it. Sine starts at 0, ends at 0, and is in the middle at 0. Sine goes up to 1 at the halfway mark, which isn't actually on a point. That's what happens when you're in thirds. Halfway is 1 and a half and down to negative one. So this is what sine normally, oops, I think I can do that better. This is what sine normally looks like. This one is moving three times as fast. So I'm gonna draw it and I'm gonna finish by two pi thirds, the entire thing right there, it's gonna finish. So sine starts at zero it's going to end at 2 pi thirds. And to make my five points, I've already gotten two of them. The third one goes right in the middle. Sine always starts at zero, ends at zero, and the middle is zero. And then in the middle of the middle, it goes up to one. And in the middle of the other middle, it goes down to negative one. So it's going to look like that. Do you see that? That's one period, one cycle of sine. Now, to make the rest of them, I am going to shoot all the way across. Always, I just personally need to make all my dots to see it. You might think that's especially silly in this one since they're just right on the, on the mark, but I think it'll be easier for me. And then in the middle, every other one is going to be in the middle. And then it's going to go in the opposite direction for the bottom ones. So this is going to go down to there and then up to there down to there up to there and some people think i can do that as i draw you go for it i'm just not that talented so all right did that part look how fast this is this thing is flying okay so that is what sine of 3x looks like again can you see the red one Red looks really slow, but it's just because sine of 3x is really fast. Now, I'm going to show you something really cool, and that is an easy way to tell if you're right is to look at the highlighter. So here's, I don't know if you can see it. There's one period, right? And then two, try to mark it in blue. Can you see that? And then three in purple. How many periods did I fit in a normal period? I fit three. So here was one, and then the blue one was two, and then the purple one was three. So in the amount of space I normally was able to do just one, I was able to make my little picture three times. And this is sine of 3x. That doesn't work for everybody, but in case it helps you, there you go. All right, let's try one more of those.
cosine of half x. So this one's going to go slow because it's only going at half speed. You can think of it where this one was going at three times the speed. So again, my period is normally 2 pi. And I'm going to do 2 pi divided by this number, divided by 1 half, which is flip and multiply. So 4 pi. Now this is interesting. I only have until 2 pi. So if it helps you, you could draw a little 4 pi just to kind of give yourself a sense of where you're trying to get to. Cosine starts at 1, and it ends at 1. And at the middle, which in this case the middle is 2 pi, it's down at negative 1. And then halfway, well really a quarter of the way, but in the middle of the middle, it's at 0. And at the middle of the middle, it's at 0, which would be 3 pi, but we really don't care about that part of the graph. And then if you were to continue in the other direction, this is what you would see. So it's important that you get this section right. This is all I need to see. But if it helps you to draw out some dots just to make sure you've got it all worked out in your head, you can do that. Um, and sure enough, a normal period ends at 2 pi. And how far did we get in 2 pi? We only got... I don't know if you can see this purple, but we only got half of a cycle done by 2 pi, and that number is half. Okay. One little note that sometimes kids do wrong is they they stop their their line too quickly. So meaning right here, if they only make the dot and they aren't really thinking about the graph, sometimes kids just come down like that. But it, that is the bottom. That is where it's going to start to slope back up. So make sure that you don't just draw that line too hastily. Make sure you show the correct curvature that it looks like it's going to come back up. And if you're not sure, then draw the arrow coming back up just to make sure. Okay, there is absolutely nothing new to teach you. The rest of these examples are just to make sure that... Uh, you can put all these concepts together at once because when we did it, we just did vertical shift or just did period or just did phase shift or just did amplitude. But obviously, you're going to have to do problems where all those things are combined. So my advice is to do amplitude and period first. And then I would do a second graph with the shift. That's my personal, that's how I do it. Um, and uh, we'll do it two different ways, but that's just, it's how I was taught. So it's how I tend to do it. So on this one, I see the one half and I see there's no period change, no B. So period is equal to just 2 pi. So notice this one, you think, why did they not do the regular 2 pi graph? Because it's going to have to shift by thirds. So when you see this, you know the thirds is going to enter in there somehow. But here's my pi. Here's my 2 pi. Here's my 3 pi. 1, 2, 3. Here's my negative pi. So sine starts at 0, ends at 0 at 2 pi, and in the middle is at 0. So there you go. I just took care of took care of period and then amplitude sine sine is going to go up to just a half. So the amplitude is equal to one half. So at the middle, I'm just going to go up to one half. And at the middle, I'm just going to go down to one half. And this would kind of be my my first graph, but not my final answer. And then I'm going to take that graph and I'm going to shift it to the right, because this one is the one that does opposite, pi thirds. So moving everything pi thirds to the right, this moves, this moves, this one moves, this one moves, this one moves. And then you might look and say, um, 
though I can I can see what it's doing every three. One, two, three, one, two, three. That might help you get it nice and accurate. And then one and a half, one and a half. It's gonna come back up. So one and a half. A plot, at least for me, plotting all those points is what helps me make a nice accurate graph. Okay. So notice I did the amplitude in the period first, and then my second and my final graph, I, I did my shift. So again, for me, the easiest way to make these graphs is to always do the amplitude in the period first. So the amplitude is going to be 3, and the period, b is equal to 2, so the period is going to be equal to 2 pi over b, and 2 pi over 2 simplifies to pi. So I think to myself, well, cosine is going to finish by pi. Cosine normally starts at 1 and ends at 1, but I'm going to start at 3 and end at 3. In the middle, cosine, at, notice I didn't say at pi, just in the middle, cosine is normally at negative 1, which times 3 is negative 3. And in the middle of the middle, it's at zero. That is definitely a non-mathematical way to think about it, but that's how that's what works for me. I just say to myself, cosine in general starts at one, ends at one, and in the middle it's one. And in the middle of the middle, it's at zero. Those are the five points of cosine that I memorize. So that allows me to make any cosine graph. And then it would continue to keep going. So it would come down like this. This would be my, my base graph or my first graph. Notice how lightly I'm doing it because it's not really my answer. That's just the amplitude and period. Now I got to shift it. So I'm going to pick a different color. I'm going to switch to blue. And I'm just going to move all these points up too, which is went off my graph. That's okay. I can still draw it up to, this one goes up to, this one goes up to, up to, up to, up to. And hopefully you can see a pattern that this middle row is just going to happen every two. Very into the patterns. Makes it easy to graph. Where these are spaced out by four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And same for these. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, so it would look like this. Notice how rounded it is, not pointy. These are very smooth curves, and you do have to go all the way to the end. Okay, there you go. Every once in a while, by the way, somebody moves this in the wrong direction. Instead of up to, they visualize parentheses there that don't exist, and they move it left or right. Be careful of that. If there's no parentheses, then it's not going left or right. Just a plus two on the end is, is always separate. All right, so we have a couple more that we can try. This one is going to be upside down. It's going to have an amplitude of two. It's going to go to the left, pi fourths. And it's going to have a period of 2 pi over 4, it's going to finish its whole cycle by pi halves. Now, I know that there are going to be some people that want to do their shifting first, so I will do this one in the opposite order. One, make a new origin. And then on your second graph, do amplitude and period. This is not the way I personally do it, but you need to find a way that works for you. So I'm going to do it this way in case that's what works for you. So left pi fourths would be here, and this is going to be my new origin. So now I say to myself, I need to finish by pi halves. Well, pi halves is here, but I have to, I have to shift. So if you're going to do it this way, you have to think to yourself, pi halves is two units. You're not actually going to pi halves. You're just shifting by pi halves. So that's going to be the end. Oops, look at that. Pen went nuts. Um, so I'm going to finish by pi halves. So what does sine do? 
sine starts at zero, ends at zero, in the middle at zero. And it's going to go instead of up to one and down to negative one, it's going to go down to negative two and then up to two. And that would give me my, my base graph. I do have to keep going, which I can see that it's actually going to be at every single one of these, but it's going to go down and then up, down and then up. And if you're thinking, do we really have to draw all the way across? Yes, you have to draw all the way across. Can you make it without drawing all the dots first? Some people can, some people can't. I am a can't person. <laughs> I, I really have to put the dots in first in order for me to get this right. So these went every other one and then every other one. I'm like, I guess I'm just good at connecting the dots. Okay. So that's what you would do if you were doing the, the shift first, making a new origin like we normally do, and then doing amplitude and period. But I will tell you that I am a amplitude and period person first. So the amplitude is two and it's flipped. And the period is still normally two pi, but over four, so pi halves. And the only reason I like that doing this first is because I think to myself, sine starts at zero. I just like that it starts at zero and then it ends at pi halves and in the middle it's zero. And then in this case, it goes down to negative two and then up to positive two. And that would be my, my parent. And then I would just take that graph and I would shift it. But you really, I can't stress enough, you just have to find the one that works for you. So I'd move it to the left, pi fourths. Um, nothing else would change in that you'd have to make all these dots. And then this one goes to the left. This one goes to the left. But in the end, you still would have to make all these dots in order to finish the graph which obviously I don't need to do twice. I've already done it, but um, just a thought on, on which way you want to do it. Okay, I hope that you're trying these on your own and just checking your answers, but in case you're not, I'll do the next one for you. The amplitude is four. It is going to the right, pi halves. And its period is normally 2 pi, but we're dividing by that number, which is 2 thirds. So that becomes 2 pi times 3 halves. I flipped and multiplied. My 2's cancel and I get 3 pi. So I personally do my first graph with amplitude and period. So it's a cosine graph. So cosine normally starts at 1 but it's gonna start at four. And it normally ends at one, at two pi, but it's all the way out here at three pi, it's gonna be back up to four. And then in the middle, so what's the middle of zero to three pi? One and a half, which is three pi halves, it's gonna be down to negative four. And in the middle of the middle, and if you're thinking, I don't know how to get the middle of the middle, we'll just count the boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six. So halfway is right there. Isn't that great? Okay, so my basic graph is going to look like this. And then the other middle of the middle was right there, even though you couldn't see it. Okay, because it was three boxes away again. And now I want to shift it right pi halves. So I'm going to go to the right, pi halves. So this one moves pi halves, this one moves pi halves, this one moves pi halves. And for me, I continue this pattern so I can shift all of them. So I looked at this and said, okay, remember it was three boxes. So three boxes and then three boxes and then it would have been three boxes. So the, I just like to make the original green dots so that I can do my shifting properly. So this one goes here, and then this one, and then this one moves here. And did that work? One, two, three, it did. So I can feel really confident. So 
So that was a little pointy right there, but again, I'm not, I'm not gonna be that fussy. Just wanna know that in general, you're getting these, okay? Um, all right, I'm just checking my answer, make sure I got it right, I did. All right, we have two more graphs. Again, if you haven't tried one on your own yet, I can't stress enough, you're really gonna wanna try one on your own. Okay, the amplitude is three, but also make a note to remember to flip it. My period is normally two pi for cosine, but we're gonna divide by two pi. So the period is one. So that's why it's on this kind of graph. So somebody would use this when they, when they wanted to make a graph that didn't have pies on it, they wanted to use a regular piece of graph paper. And it's going to go to the left two. Oops, no T. It's going to go to the left two. So for cosine, I'm normally going to start at one, but I'm going to start at negative three. I'm going to end at negative three. And when am I going to do that? By one. That's my period. I have to finish the entire thing by there. And cosine goes up to positive three. Normally it would go up to one. So whew, this can be super tight. Can you picture this? So it's literally go up and then back down again. It is super, super small, but we didn't even move it yet. We still have to move it two over. So with my plus two, I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it two over here. And then I'm going to do it. Now, as it turns out, when I do this, and I go up and I come back down, and I go up and I come back down, it's actually going to end up falling right where it was. Okay, so the plus two didn't even end up mattering. Now, I will say that if you get one that's this tight, the temptation is really, really great to sit there and say, well, I'm just going to renumber this and make this the one so that I have more room. If you do that, you will defeat the entire purpose. When somebody goes along and they're looking at a heart monitor or something and they see it going like this, they're like, oh man, that, that guy's heartbeat is too fast. If somebody said, yeah, you know what? Let's just change the scale on that. Let's make this 50 instead of 100 so that it looks smoother. That didn't make the guy feel any better. That just made it smooth out. That's no good. You've got to keep the same unit of measure for all of them. That's really important. We want it to look faster. That's the whole point. You want it to look slower. And if you keep, if you keep changing it so that one time this is 2 pi, and then another time, because it's convenient to you, make this 8 pi, and they look identical, then you've defeated the whole purpose of having it go until 8 pi. So don't do that. All right, last graph. Can't stress enough. You should really try it on your own. Okay, amplitude is equal to 1 half. We have another one that is flipped because of the negative. Our period is equal to pi, uh, normally 2 pi, but divided by pi is equal to 2. So on this, we're counting by ones. This is going to be 2. That's going to be the end of my graph. And we are going to move it to the left 1. So normally, sine would start at 0 and end at 0 and be the middle at 0. Those are three of my five points. The other two is that it goes up to 1 and down to negative 1. But we're only going to go up to 1 half, and we're going to flip it. So I'm going to go down to negative 1 half, and then up to 1 half. And that's going to be my base picture. But then, because I'm moving it, so how am I moving it? Left 1. This one, you are going to be able to see the difference. If I go left 1, then it'll look like this. Now I know it's small, but I can go all the way across pretty easily by realizing it's always going to cross right on there. And then this is going to go up to a half, down to a half, up to a half, down to a half. 
And again, some people don't need to make the dots before they start, but I have zero drawing skills, no artistic ability whatsoever. So I have to be able to connect some dots in order to be successful. You do what works for you. But I will be checking, oops, to see if it's right at the end. Let's say you do this on a test or quiz and everything else is perfect. I am, I'm not going to take off for that. But because these are notes that I'm trying to make look good on my video, I'm going to redraw it. Okay. Okay. On these last two, our goal is to figure out the equation based on all the information. So as soon as I see that it's a sine function, I'm give myself a little something here, sine of, and then amplitude of three. So the amplitude goes here. A period of pi halves. Ooh, this is going to be tricky. I'm going to have to work backwards. So clearly it's not just period of two pi. So there is going to be something there. Oh, the y-intercept of two. So here's the good news. I don't expect you to move these left or right. Just use that y-intercept to affect the up or the down. So I do know somehow it's been moved. So we'll figure that out in a minute. First, let's get our period. So two pi over something, that B, that's what I wanna find, gave me pi halves. So let's clear our fraction. I know some of you are trying to figure out how to do this in your head, but don't always clear fractions. Multiply both sides by two to clear that one and multiply both sides by B to clear that one. And then you get four pi is equal to pi b. Divide both sides by pi, and you get b is equal to four. So all we have left to do is figure out how they moved it up or down. I won't be giving you any left or right, so don't worry about that. That would be a little too tricky for this starting level. But we are going to have to move it up or down. So normally, you know, a sine function starts at zero, but ours has started at two. So at first you might think, oh, so it's definitely going to be two. Well, probably, but always just plug it in. So two is equal to three sine of four times zero plus C. And sine of four times zero is sine of zero which is zero times three. So it turns out that C, so this is equal to zero. So C is equal to two. And you can write that as your answer, but you'll see on the next one that doesn't always work. So I wanted you to understand that concept. So my final answer is Y is equal to three sine of four X plus two. Okay, last one. Write an equation for a cosine function y is equal to, again, we need an amplitude given, cosine, so it does have an unusual period, so there's going to be something there, and then there's going to be a c, it's been moved up or down. We don't have to worry about left or right. So how do we find that b? Well, we know 2 pi divided by b is going to come out to be 3 pi halves. How do you solve for b? Don't be too tricky. Clear the fractions. Multiply both sides by 2 and multiply both sides by b. On this side, you're left with 4 pi. And on this side, you're left with um, 3 pi b. Divide both sides by 3 pi. And you're left with 4 thirds. So that's what's going to go in there. Now we, so that's like step one, is find B. Step two is to find C. So Y is equal to three fifths cosine of four thirds X plus C. Use the point that they gave you. You know that when X is zero, Y is five. This is what I did last time. But it was easy with sine because sine, when it moves, it starts at zero. So when it moves up to, it's easy. But this one's a little more tricky because it normally starts at one, but it's been, it's got an amplitude of three fifths. So now it actually starts at three fifths. 
but then it goes up to five. That definitely got trickier. So the easiest thing to do is just to use the point. Three fifths cosine of four thirds times zero plus C. So cosine of four thirds times zero is zero. And then cosine of zero, gotta know this stuff, is one. So this becomes three fifths plus C. And now, as if this problem wasn't already hard enough, you have to subtract three fifths from both sides, which gives you five, uh, four and two fifths is equal to C. And that's gonna be my final answer. Y is equal to three fifths cosine of four thirds X plus four and two fifths. That one definitely was a little bit tricky. But you now have everything you need to do this homework. So have a great day.